Welcome to ECE 376, lecture number five, binary outputs and timing. Now what we looked at in our last lecture was how to get binary inputs to the processor. With that, I count how many times you hit a button, how many times the light goes on, how many times the temperature passes below 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, now we're going to look at binary outputs. With an output, I can drive a stepper motor, I can drive a speaker, I can drive an LED, all sorts of things you can do with outputs. Now the thing you have to remember with the pick, with the output pins, that's your port A through port D, the, when they're input, they're high impedance, meaning it's going to be about you know, 10 mega ohms or, or higher. It's not going to draw any current. With an input, I'm reading things like the push buttons. The hardware is driving the voltages, where 0 volts is logic 0, and 5 volts is logic 1. When they're output, in contrast, the pick chip is driving the I.O. pins, so the pick is turning the LEDs on and off. When it's an output, logic 1 is 5 volts, and logic 0 is 0 volts. And each of these pins is capable of up to about 25 milliamps, sourcing or sinking. So they can do a little bit of power. They can turn on LEDs, but they can't do much more. Now, uh, for this code, we're going to do things like how to build a piano. To get the notes right, you have to make sure that you're in decimal mode. So make sure that you go to Project, Build Options, Project. And under MPASM, make sure you're in decimal. The reason being is if I have a counter and I'm counting to 100, 100 decimal is different than 100 hex. The default is hex decimal, so you need to change it to decimal. So starting out, to drive hardware like a speaker, there's kind of two options. Uh, one option is if I need less than 5 volts, less than 25 milliamps, drive it directly. In that case, I could do something like this. An 8 ohm speaker, if I only want to get 20 milliamps to the speaker, uh, 5 volts at 25 milliamps is 200 ohms. Make this a 200 ohm resistor and not the pick drive a speaker. It's not going to be real loud, but loud enough you can hear it. If you want more power, then use a buffer, like a transistor or an H-bridge. There should be an H-bridge in your kits. This is capable of up to 46 volts DC and 3 amps, and very easy to interface. You just need to give it power and ground. The third line right here, the plus 12 volts, it can actually be 5 volts. This limits the output voltage to your outputs A and B. Then I actually have two H-bridges on here. C and D is controlled by 1 and 2. A and B is controlled by 3 and 4. Connect these to the pick chip. If the output is 1, 0, then I'm going to have plus 5 volts across the H-bridge. If it's 0, 1, I get minus 5 volts, or actually 3.27 volts. And 0, 0, there's no output. And I'll illustrate that in just a sec when we get to playing notes. In terms of software and timing, we'll actually kind of back it up. The hardware side is actually fairly easy. Hardware connections directly, if I need less than 5 volts, 20 milliamps. Uh, through an H-bridge or a transistor, if you need more. Uh, we'll do a transistor when we get to LEDs next lecture. Right now, just use an H-bridge. Starting out, um, suppose I want to count really, really fast. The simplest program you can do to count is set port C to output, make everybody binary, and then just count. And here I'm actually counting on port D. I'll increment port D, put the result in port D, repeat. This actually takes three clocks to go through, it's one, two instructions, plus one per go-to, three clocks. Each clock's 100 nanoseconds. And if you look at port D pin zero on the oscilloscope, this is what you'll see. It's one, two, three divisions at 100 nanoseconds per division. 300 nanoseconds are three clocks high, three clocks low. And this rigging is actually at high frequencies, transmission lines, or circuit boards look like transmission lines. What you're seeing is on your pick board, the voltages go from the pick to the I.O. pin, see discontinuity and reflect. And this is the bouncing of the reflections. At high frequencies, you need to take transmission like effects into account. This is only running at 1.6 megahertz, and you can start seeing those transmission line effects. Uh, two courses I highly recommend are Ben Broughton's Signal Integrity and Electromagnetic Compatibility. Those are two courses taught at NDSU by our chair, Ben Broughton, that looks at how do you design circuits so that they do not behave like transmission lines how to get rid of this ringing. That ringing is a problem. If this goes below 1.6 volts, I'll treat that as a false trigger. I'll think that I actually have a 1-0 coming in. If I want to slow it down, because the pick is really, really fast. It's 1.9, 1.6 megahertz if I do nothing. If 
I throw in a wait loop, I'm going to toggle RC0 then wait. Now I can actually set the timing, set that wait loop, and I can tell you the frequency of the output. For example, suppose I want to play the note uh, C4, 261 hertz. 261 hertz means I need to be high for 19,000 clocks, low for 19,000 clocks. And to calculate that, the number of clocks that I need to spend in my wait loop is 10 million. The PIC executes 10 million instructions per second, divided by 2 times the frequency. And the reason for 2 is I need a set and clear twice per cycle to create a sine wave or square wave. Uh, that means I need to burn 19,000 clocks. One way to do that is have a separate team that's got 19,000 no ops. Um, that does work. It's not very stylish, but it does work. Uh, another option is to put it in a loop. So this is a wait loop. The way it works is this inner loop right here in blue has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 instructions plus a go to. This burn t burns 10 clocks. This loop is called 100 times 19 times. What happens is counter 0 is initialized to 100. Then I go through this loop, decrement counter 0. I'm now at 99, repeat. 98, 97, 96. When I get to 3, 2, 1, 0, then I kick out. So I do this loop 100 times. This outer loop in red is executed 19 times. Can counter 1 starts at 19, goes to 18, 17, 16. When I get to 0, I kick out. So the total number of clocks is the blue loop, 10 times 100 times 19, plus the red code. Uh, four lines of code, plus one for go to, five times 19, plus the black code, one, two, three, plus one for go to, four instructions. The total number of instructions is going to be four, well, n was zero plus n1 plus n2. The trick is to come up with these numbers, 19 and 100, so that the total is close to 19,157. The limitations, this is an 8-bit processor. These numbers cannot be bigger than 255. The biggest number you can store with an 8-bit processor is 255. Um, can't be less than zero, of course, and they have to be integers. So it's play with these numbers till you get to something close. Uh, 19 and 100 are fairly close. If I do that and throw that on the processor and download it, this is what you see on the oscilloscope. Rule of thumb in this class, oscilloscopes are your friend. On the board, all I'll see is a light. If I look on the oscilloscope, I'll see the lights actually flickering on and off. On the oscilloscope, you can also see the timing. This is on for 1.92 milliseconds. The PIC executes one clock every 100 nanoseconds. So this is actually 1,920 clocks. It's supposed to be 1,900, 19,157 is 19,200. Uh, the frequency is supposed to be 261 hertz. It's actually 260.7. This is the beauty of assembler. I can actually count how many instructions, how many clocks it's going to take to go through this code, and tweak it to get it just right. So to illustrate that, here I've got that program downloaded on the PIC. It's counting on port C. The output goes to a 200 ohm resistor, goes to my speaker, to ground, and you get 261 hertz. If you look on the oscilloscope, I can see that. Or if you don't happen to have an oscilloscope nearby, this is an app on your cell phone. It's a piano tuner. So there you can see it's 262 hertz. I'm also counting on port C. One way to generate octaves is as I count, I divide by two. So port C pin zero is 262 hertz. Port C pin one is divided by two. One thirty hertz. Uh, low frequencies don't detect real well. Here's sixty hertz. Let's go back to two sixty hertz. That works fairly well. This is a fairly quiet sound. In contrast, if I connect through the H bridge, again this goes to power and ground, five volts and zero volts. The far left side is also five volts. Um, the left two pins go to port C pin zero and ground. And these pins go to the speaker. That's what an H-bridge does for you. It makes a really, really loud sound. And this is loud enough through the 200 ohm resistor, so I'm just going to use this setup. And it's getting kind of annoying, so let's turn it off for now. That kind of illustrates some of the timing. You can design 
a program to output a square wave at precisely 261 hertz. Now, this program is kind of annoying. It's always playing a note. So let's build a one key piano. With a one key piano, you can do things like uh, play some talking head songs, about all the notes that you need, some other new age music. A way to do that is this flowchart. What happens is I'm going to initialize the ports. I'm then going to check, is the button pushed? If it's not pushed, don't toggle. If I don't toggle, I wouldn't hear anything. If it is pushed, I do toggle. The way the program works is I'm going to test point B pin zero. If it's pressed, I'm going to call a subroutine called toggle. All that routine does is increment port C or toggle port C pin zero. Call my wait routine. That's where it kills 19,000 clocks and repeats. Once I compile and download the code, this is what I get. So you can do your tunes. But all you can do with a single button, you do your Morse code. Um, send your name in Morse code. And that's about all I can do with a single note. If you want to get fancier, I could build a four note piano. So this will be about the same code as before, but now I'm going to have four separate subroutines. The first subroutine waits for 261 hertz. The second subroutine waits for 293 hertz, 329 hertz, and 349 hertz. To do that, I'll come up with four different wait loops. Uh, to calculate the number of clocks, that's 10 million divided by two, divided by your frequency. So to play note C4, I want to wait 19,157 clocks. To play the note D4, I want to wait 17,064 clocks, 15,000, 14,000 clocks. And a way to do that, is first have the main routine, just check to see which button you're pushing. Based upon the button, I'll call the wait loop. So the way to do that in software is I'm going to check, move port B to W. Uh, the only reason I'm doing that is I want to check, was that equal to zero? Then I'm going to check the zero bit of status. If it was set, meaning a button, um, Set meaning it was zero, the button was not pushed. I'm going to skip over this command. Otherwise, I'll, I'll toggle port C pin zero. I'll then wait. If I hit port C pin zero, I'll wait 19,000 clocks. If port, C, port B pin one is pushed, I'll wait 17,000 clocks, and so on. And repeat. And once the code is downloaded, you can then check. I've got my four notes. If you have an oscilloscope, you can measure the frequency. Otherwise, you can do an app like the Piano Tuner. 261.9 Hz. Next note. 292.7 Hz. 331.8 Hz. 355.4 Hz. And the way the wait routine works are similar to before. I've got these three loops. The inner loop is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 clocks times 243 times 7, plus 1, 2, 3, 4, plus 1 for go to, 5 clocks times 7, plus 5. Add all that up, I should get to 17,000 clocks. If you check on the oscilloscope, I can see it's actually 293.1 hertz, 17,080 clocks. Uh, for 14,000 clocks. Again, I'll modify the code so that the inner loop, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, makes 11 clocks times 239 times 6, plus 5 clocks times 6, plus 4 clocks, should you give you 14,326. Throw it on the oscilloscope, but I can see it's actually 347.2 hertz, 14,400 clocks between interrupts, or between calls. The result of the four-key piano is I've got the frequency that I'm shooting for from the oscilloscope or from this little piano app. I can find the actual frequency and see how close you are. This is one of the reasons to use assembler. In assembler, I can count instructions. If I know instructions, I know the exact number of clocks. In assembly, I can precisely set frequencies. I can precisely set timing. Can't do that with other languages, at least not, not as easily. 
Uh, so that's binary outputs and timing with a PIC processor. Lecture number five.